Mike, it's great to have you. And uh, with all the caveats about uh, Oakmark's uh, strategy and looking for value, I just wonder how you sort of characterize the period we're in, uh, this ongoing chop, these unresolved, often binary outcomes that we're looking for some relief from one way or another. Yeah, at Oakmark, um, you know, the, the majority of our portfolio is comprised of traditional value stocks that trade for, for low multiples of good old-fashioned earnings. Uh, you know, a number of the names in our, in our financial holdings, our, our energy holdings, even our industrials would fit this description. But in a market environment like we're seeing today, we've also been able to establish some positions in, in higher quality, faster growing businesses um, where, where stock prices become untethered from, from long term business value. Uh, you know, companies like, um, like Global Payments and Salesforce, which we purchased in the most recent quarter and we can talk about in more detail are good examples of businesses that fit that mold. So our broader definition of value combined with our very long investment horizon has historically afforded us the ability to uncover opportunities in, in most every environment, uh, including today. Right. I, Amazon, you mentioned uh, uh, some of the Salesforce, Pinterest and Pulte. What kind of time horizon do you have to think about to be buying Pulte here? Um, well, you know, Pulte trades at a, at a very low multiple of earnings today. So. Um, you know, we don't underwrite today's profitability and assume that it's that it's normal. And uh, we do temper that quite a bit. Uh, but when a business is trading at such a, a low multiple, a mid single digit multiple of earnings, um, you know, you, you don't have to wait too long. Now, with something like Salesforce, um, where we think the business is very cheap and trading at, you know, perhaps half of, of private market values on an on an enterprise value to sales basis, but uh, is generating slightly lower margins today than certainly what we think they're capable of. Um, you know, in, in an investment like that, you might have to wait a little bit longer. Of course, because you also believe that uh, co-CEO Brett Taylor, obviously Benioff is still CEO as well, uh, and new CFO or CFO Amy Weaver, you say are bringing a culture of financial discipline. Tell me what that means, how that's going to translate into something you believe is more attractive in terms of wanting to own this company stock. Yeah, well, you know, Salesforce is a, uh, is a great business that we've admired from a distance for quite some time. You know, we just needed a better price. And when you think about the financial characteristics of the company, it's got 80% gross margins, it grows 20% organically, and almost all of that revenue is recurring. Um, but more recently, with the stock price weakness, and, and as you said, kind of combined with some changes at the top of the org chart, we decided to give it a fresh look. And our conclusion was that the renewed focus on, on profitability and margin expansion combined with really the strong underlying business fundamentals that we see today, we're likely to yield um, you know, really impressive results over a longer time horizon. And if you think about Salesforce, we believe they have all the ingredients to be a much higher margin business. They already have immense scale, um, they have very low churn, and they have very strong pricing power. So I mentioned before the five times multiple of forward revenue, um, that's about half of what, what smart buyers have been willing to pay for fast growing enterprise software companies like this. And, that multiple would equate to something like a low double digit multiple of, of operating profit if you assume a more margin profile, say something like, a, like an Oracle or an SAP, which we think they'll eventually achieve. So we think Salesforce uh, provides a great opportunity to invest in a, in a real dominant business at a discounted valuation. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.